Well, thanks for clicking on to what will be a bit of a stratospheric polar vortex uh, special. It looks as if over the next 24 hours, the winds, uh, the mid winds within the 10 millibar level is finally going to reverse, uh, blowing from west to east. And that will herald the beginning of a major sudden stratospheric warming. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> uh, well, this is the 24-hour chart here of the GFS indicating that we've got the strong warming over the top of the pole, displacement of the vortex into the North Atlantic, uh, stretched out between um, North America and indeed the UK, Western Europe here. If we skip out to about five days from now at the 10 millibar level, you can see here an almost complete disappearance of the vortex altogether here. So this is... Um, the major sudden stratospheric warming well and truly underway. When we look at a couple of um, you know, scientific aspects, I want to look at that specifically today. Bear in mind, I will emphasize that this is something that I am not an expert on. So I'm showing you a few tweets by guys that are a lot more um, experienced in terms of Sun stratospheric warmings and stratospheric atmospheric uh, physics and whatnot. So I'm I'm wanting to kind of look in a little bit more detail as to exactly what this essentially is that's that's taking place at the moment. So in essence, it happens every two to three winters. So it's not that uncommon at all. I want to emphasize that a major sun stratospheric warming occurs every two to three winters, and of course. The effects of each and every one can be different. We can get 2018, extreme example. Another example of extreme stratospheric warming is 2013. Quite often a piece from the East that was forgotten about. And then, of course, we've got 2019, major sudden stratospheric warming that had literally no impact on our weather here in the UK and Western Europe. But our good friend at the Met Office, Marco Patagna, uh, tweeted earlier today that warming is well and truly underway in the stratosphere, 10 millibars. Uh, the major sudden stratospheric warming, SSW, tomorrow is still likely to be our first full day of wind reversal to easterlies. Another tweet here by Dr. Simon Lee, um, British guy, but based in New York, I believe. Um, he tweeted recently to say that per the latest GFS analysis, the temperature within the Arctic stratosphere at 10 millibars, um, around 30 kilometers above our heads, has risen to plus one Celsius. That is over 50 Celsius above average. So that is your classic sudden stratospheric warming where the temperature goes you know, from minus 50, minus 55, all the way up to the freezing point within a matter of a couple of days. So quite a dramatic event, actually, that's taking place at the moment. This is due to the ongoing sudden stratospheric warming, a natural phenomenon which occurs about every two to three winters. So I have to emphasize that it isn't that unusual. It's not extreme in any way. It's an extreme event, but it's not an unusual event. So he also tweeted to say that with a major sudden stratospheric warming formally occurring Wednesday stroke Thursday, i.e. right now, here's a look at the average evolution of previous major SSWs since 1979. Number one, the easterlies at 60, um, 60 degrees north are relatively short-lived. So the reversal in the winds, so winds, of course, typically blowing um, you know, west to east within the 10 millibar level over the pole. Uh, of course, the buildup of cold air with the lack of sun during the winter months allows the winds to become very, very strong. And of course, the, the vortex within that core tends to drop to minus anywhere from minus 60 to minus 90 uh, Celsius pretty much every winter. The colder, the stronger the winds, the stronger the vortex is. And typically, that then reflects down to the troposphere, affects and becomes, you know, the jet stream winds at um, you know, forty thousand feet above our heads. It dictates weather, um, you know, 
generally across the hemisphere, um, that becomes stronger and more influential. And in turn, that tends to lead to milder conditions, not just across our part of the world, but also across much of the Northern Hemisphere. It kind of tends to bottle the cold up to the Northern high latitudes. So, like I say, emphasizing, number one, he says the easterlies at 60 degrees north, so that's a way up uh, within the high latitudes. Are, the easterlies are relatively short-lived after that major sudden stratospheric warming takes place and only in the mid to upper stratosphere. Two, anonymously, the anonymously weak vortex propagates down through the column. So these winds, these reversal in winds, has to, this is the important aspect, has to then filter down through the stratosphere and then ultimately affect the troposphere. It therefore weakens the jet stream. It then forces it to become a lot more wavy, amplified or meridional, and therefore that can set the wheels in motion to a reversal in the, the upper winds within the 500 millibar level from, say, 18,000 feet down to the surface that is the key column that kind of 18 to twenty thousand feet above our heads is essentially our weather and if you can affect what goes on within that major sudden stratospheric warming within the troposphere that then in turn hopefully if you want cold weather and i know a lot of people do and a lot of people don't of course the bills are you know skyrocketed in the last few months they're expected to go up even more during the month of April. So this, in a sense, is not a good thing at this time of the year to see this type of event. But the key is, aspect is, is there a connection between the stratosphere and the troposphere? And if that wind, easterly wind, reversed from the normal, filters down into the lower portion of the stratosphere and affects the troposphere and potentially starts to reverse the winds, within the lowest 20,000 feet of the atmosphere, that is what can eventually bring the easterlies into our part of the world, of course. But it there's a lot of aspects, that are a lot of complicating aspects that need to come into play for this to take place here. But notice, what I want to emphasize this. So, of course, the easterlies are relatively short-lived within the mid to upper stratosphere. But... The anonymously weak vortex, remember, you're actually essentially forcing the cold from a way up at the, at, at the upper portion of the stratosphere down through the column and into the troposphere. So you're emptying essentially the, the cold reservoir that's circling the northern hemisphere down into the column that affects our weather. And the effects of this propagation downwards can have long-lasting effects and that is the reason why i think if if everything comes together correctly and we're not left under the block of warmer because that can happen and, and it's still possible then the effects of this kind of locked in pattern can be long-lived and that is why i think the month of, of march could be a pretty cold one um world climate service so this is an interesting um um twitter feed that i follow often this say uh, this person or this company i don't know if it's a, an individual person or a company i do apologize uh, to to the entity that um follows this uh, that that produces this sorry but this 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 say uh, person or company goes on to say that the the zeros z, uh, z gfs ensemble showing the stratospheric vortex disruption working its way down to the lower stratosphere into the upper tr troposphere by the beginning of march so this uh, chart here indicates that filtering down of the energy here the downwelling uh, through the column and into the lower portion of the atmosphere now they go on to say that could the the you know the 60 degree north wind reversal reach 10 millibars in other words it's quite unusual to get that reversal in winds in to the lower stratosphere and upper troposphere the last time this happened was in the winter of 2010 february 
So this month, back in 2010, we had the the the, the 100 millibar levels, which is quite low down in the atmosphere, reversed from westerly to easterly. So that is a more unusual event to take place, may I add, but interesting, of course, nonetheless. And we'll have to watch and see this effect, what happens from 10 millibars all the way down to 100 millibars. So I hope that's somewhat more informative and a little bit more explanation as to exactly what this SSW is going to do. So we've, we now know that it's happening. And of course, the question mark is going to be between now and the beginning of March, what impact this wind reversal happening as of recording is going to have on the tropospheric pattern and indeed our pattern here in the UK, Ireland and Europe. So very, very interesting, very exciting times to come. And of course, the 10 millibar level of the GFS ensemble indicates that we literally have a complete destruction of the PV at 10 millibars. Let's have a look at the 50 millibar level uh, because this is the lower portion of the stratosphere and you can see that it is quite different to what we're seeing at the moment. But if we skip all the way out to 10 days, the reason why I'm going out to 10 days is because remember the lag there's usually a two-week lag between the event taking place at 10 millibars away up at the top of the stratosphere and down into the troposphere. So this is the reflection at 50 millibars, so the lower portion of the stratosphere, and you can see here the warming taking place from eastern Siberia across the top of the pole, over the top of the pole, and in towards the North America side. This is 10 days from now, of course, which is the, what, the 25th. Of February. Let's have a look and see what it looks like by the time we reach the very, very end of the period here. So let's go out to 384 hours from now and see what the GFS is showing. So it's showing the strong warming over the top of the pole, and it'll be interesting to see whether the Arctic Oscillation then tanks into negative. I would expect personally, with this strong warming taking place within the lower stratosphere that we would have a strong build-up, a strong reflection into the 500 millibar pattern. So in other words, strong high latitude blocking developing into the early portion of March. And like I say, once this pattern locks in, it can take a long time to leave. So um, very, very interesting and very exciting times to come. Looking now at the period over the next week to 10 days here. Uh, so this is, is got, going to have nothing to do with what's going on now because the, the time frame between now and 10 days is too short for the effects of the stratospheric warming uh, taking place. But notice here, remember I showed you yesterday in the video a potential of a cold blast and maybe a bit of a turn to easterly winds, northeasterly winds towards the second half of next week. Well, this is the, the GFS, 850 millibar temperatures here. And, of course, we've got an area of low pressure that moves across England and Wales over the next, you know, 12 to 24 hours. Then we've got another feature that moves in. Still a bit of uncertainty in terms of how deep it looks, if it's going to be in the nine, the low 980s in millibars. Bear in mind, by the way, my weather station hasn't recorded a, a pressure any lower than 1,000 millibars the entire month so this is going to be quite interesting to see a bit of a, a pressure drop squeezing the isobars strong winds is going to be associated with this this barrels through and then we're left still in relatively milder if you notice here that area of high pressure just not wanting to leave and then as we progress towards the middle and second half of the week we've got a bit of a northwesterly wind colder wind coming in then we have a little bit of a turn to that air mass coming in underneath that area of high pressure all depends on the position of the high, whether it shifts to the west, northwest enough to open the door to cold air coming in from the, the north or the northeast here. Ran out of time as per usual, but I hope that's informative. I hope it's helpful when it comes to explaining a few things with re regards to the stratospheric warming. So if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. There's a lot of things going on, so please keep it right here. Enjoy the rest of your evening. See you again, hopefully tomorrow.